Hello, my friends. It is Wednesday. Do not adjust your computer, iPad, <laughs> phone, whatever you are watching on. It is Wednesday, and normally we do not do a Facebook Live on Wednesdays at 7 p.m., but today is not a normal day, and some of you have been waiting patiently for this day to come. So, what does that mean? It means we're unboxing the Magical Mystery Bead Box. Yes, we are. <laughs> I'm so excited to show this to you guys. I cannot wait to dive into this box, show you all of the goodies that are included, and to put together a really fun piece of jewelry. We're going to do something kind of out of the ordinary for us today. When we make our project, you're just going to have to wait and see what that is. You're going to be like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm always, I always like to keep you guessing, right? <laughs> Tina says impatiently. She's been impatiently waiting. <laughs> I know the feeling. Happy Wednesday evening, Mary. So good to see you guys. There's Miss Wanda, Stacia. Stacia, I just commented on your um, one of your Facebook posts. You are so funny. I know I've said that before. Hey, Eve and Betty and Julie. It's so good to see everybody. So. I'm glad y'all are here because like I said, we don't normally do a, I know you like my chair. <laughs> Wanda says, look at that chair. It's so nice because I can lay my head back. That's the best part. And it does kind of rock. I have to, I have to make sure that I'm not rocking as I'm talking, which is hard to do because I just kind of, I'm Southern. So we rock when we talk, right? <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Oh, I'm glad that you're here because we normally don't do a Wednesday, um, Facebook Live, but we do have the Magical Mystery Bead Box. We're going to unbox it, and then you guys will see me again first thing tomorrow morning, which is cool. Um, do want to touch on a few things, you guys. Summer camp, the days are counting down. You've got approximately five days left. If you have not signed up for the Jesse James Speed Summer Camp, please do so now. Colleen says, hey, beautiful, I'm new. Welcome. We love new people. Welcome, welcome. So glad to have you here with us. We have a lot of fun here, so you are in the right place. <laughs> All right, so summer camp for those of you who do not know about the summer camp yet is the jesse james beads answer to all of the bead shows that are not happening this year due to the pandemic so we thought it would be fun to put together a little something fun and um this is kind of what the jesse james beads team came up with which is virtual summer camp so all of the information for um, all of the information for the summer camp is over on the Jesse James Speeds blog, and um, there are several posts showing kind of teaser pics of the projects and some of the goodies that are going to be inside the um, kit that you buy to go along with it. And you guys, like I said, the days are counting down. So if you've not signed up yet, definitely want to do that. You've got five days left to take care of that. In the meantime, though, we have weekly deals that are going on, and one of our weekly deals includes the Magical Mystery Bead Box and one of our deals includes free shipping so a lot of stuff going on all at once here let me just run down the weekly deals really really quickly and tell you why it is that you may want to consider this while you are thinking about grabbing your spot around the campfire at the uh, Jesse James Speed summer camp so free shipping on a $139 cart no code needed for this this includes summer camp so if you are still on the fence, now is the time because the kit is big. There's a lot in it. So take advantage of the free shipping on that. That's a really, really, really good deal um, because you're going to get a lot of stuff to take all nine classes. Nine classes is a lot. So that means there is a lot of stuff coming your way. Uh, the second weekly deal is buy three, get one free on chain. And the code for that is B3G1CHAIN. And that's always a good one. We might use a little bit of chain tonight, but we're definitely going to use some chain coming up. Uh, so you're going to have to stay tuned. We've got things in the works for you guys. <laughs> Lots of fun things in the air these days. 
And last but not least, our Magical Mystery Bead Box has a deal going on right now, which is $10 off, and the code for that is MYSTERY. So if you've never signed up for the Magical Mystery Bead Box before, or you are thinking about doing it, now is the opportunity to do so, because you can get $10 off. Now, that being said, if you want the August box, you have to sign up. Today is August 5th. If you want the August box, the cutoff for that is August 7th. So you have until Friday to sign up and still get the August box. If you sign up after the 7th, then that means that you will not get your first box until September. So keep that in mind because I feel like a lot of people sign up in that kind of in-between time and it feels like a really long time until you get your first box. But just know that that's what happens when you are in that kind of transition from one month to the other. So just keep that in mind. That's why some, some months it feels like it takes a long time, right, to get your Magical Mystery Bead Box. That, and it's just super exciting. If you don't know what the Magical Mystery Bead Box is, then good news for you. I've got one, and we are going to unbox it. So I have the July Magical Mystery Bead Box, and you guys, um, a message from the bead team is just so that you guys know there were prime deals going on at the same time that Magical Mystery Bead Box was shipping. So there was a lot going on, still working on a reduced staff because of the pandemic. So we appreciate everybody's patience with these boxes going out this month. And for your patience, this box has high quality goodies in it, you guys, like it's extra, meaning like not that there's necessarily extra stuff in it, but like it's extra good stuff. <laughs> you know, it's, it's extra good stuff. And I just love it. This is a really beautiful box. So for those of you who don't have this box, you want to check this one out. This is just a really good kind of indication of what is to come with all of the boxes that are um, in the future. And I happen to know what some of those are. And I can tell you, they just keep getting better and better and better. So all right, it's exciting. Oh my gosh, Cederica says, I'm a wire wrapper. I said, I probably said your name wrong. I'm so sorry. She says she is a wire wrapping fiend and she's learned so much from me. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really, I really appreciate that in a way that I can't even express in words. I'm having a full heart kind of day today. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm always grateful and thankful, but today is just one of those days where I'm just like exceedingly over the top thankful for all of the opportunities and for getting to spend my day with you guys doing things that I love. So anyway, that is neither here nor there. Let's get to this box. I could go on and on forever. You guys know that I could, but you're here to see the box. So let's get to it. The very first thing I'm going to do though, is I'm going to pull out the card and show you the little teaser here. So this month for July, it's actually August now, but July's box was Sugar Magnolia. And you can tell right away, this has got classy, just wonderful, warm goodness. Like, I don't know. When I think of Sugar Magnolia, when I look at this little card, that's just kind of what I'm feeling. I'm thinking, sitting back in my chair rocking while I'm talking to you guys with my iced tea and the most beautiful deep colors that happen at the end of the summer. And believe it or not, you guys, we are at the end of summer. And so you're going to see some of the deepest hues, right? Says on the back, Sugar Magnolia, uh, mini bead mix, tassel assortment, uh, wood bead design, crystal mix, there's a bead strand, metal assortment, cup chain, chain reaction, boho beads, and some wooden flower beads. And I can't wait to show you those because those are amazing. There's also a design contest. Enter for a chance to win one of three $50 Jesse James beads gift cards. You guys, this is so much fun. So don't forget about this part. Check out the Magical Mystery Bead Box Facebook group for more details on how to enter. So if you are part of the Secret Stash group, but you're not part of the Magical Mystery Bead Box group, get over there. What are you doing? Get over there and join the Magical Mystery Bead Box group. It's a great place to get inspiration. If you're kind of stuck on a box and you don't really know and you need some creative, you know, inspiration from your fellow beaters, it's there. And I don't mean just the current box 
people are sitting on boxes from months ago and pulling them out and either one showing their amazing creations from previous boxes or they're just now getting around to that box and they're like okay now what do I do show me what you guys did so the magical mystery bead box group is not just about the current box it's about all boxes anybody can join in it's a lots of fun and again it's just like secret stash it's a wonderful community if you're not a part of those come hang out with us what are you doing with yourself we have a good time <laughs> all right so without further ado let's get down to it and we'll go through the box and then we shall create something all right and you guys we're going to create something we're going to do something that we we randomly or we seldomly do tonight so i'm kind of excited about it so here's another close-up marianne says she's sitting on four months worth see i'm telling you People hang on to their boxes and save them for special occasions. So it's not always about the uh, current box that's happening over there on the Magical Mystery Bead Box group. All right, so here is a close up of the picture. And then, of course, on the back, you're going to get your what's inside. I know I ran through this really quickly, but we're going to go through it in more depth right now. All right, so the first thing is the Sugar Magnolia Mini Bead Mix. And that is this guy and you guys i cheated i cheated i'm not gonna lie just keeping it real i've already played with all of this <laughs> i just could not help myself so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna dump this out because i want you guys to see everything that's in it because it's good look at the colors here these colors are going to take you from the very end of summer which some of you are grumbling about don't want to hear about the end of summer i know i know but these colors are going to take you from the end of summer right into the beginnings of fall. You know where the weather is still pretty warm. You get your balmy kind of nights all the way through like the middle to the end of October. These colors and this whole group of beads is really going to kind of help you transition from one season to the next and still have the most beautiful beads and the most beautiful pieces of jewelry ever. So we've got lots of warm browns in here. We've got deep green, we have cream, there's copper in here, there's antique bronze. There is a little bit of everything. There is crystals. There are little, look at the little drop pearls. I think those are adorable. I love those, those are so, so cute. You guys know I love little beads. There are miracle beads in here that are this really kind of cool taupe color really love those and you've got wooden beads you've got your copper beads and of course you've got some suede tassels in here as well as our creamy chiffon tassels the little floral guys so pretty so a lot going on here there are some butterfly charms in here as well just a really overall just a beautiful mix like I don't I'm I struggle with words believe it or not you guys I know I could talk to a brick wall but sometimes when it comes to like describing Jesse James beads and the mixes I run out of words for them and this is definitely one of those where I'm like reaching because all I know is that it's just beautiful right I mean it is it's just beautiful all right so you're also going to get a blossoms blooming tassel assortment and of course you're going to get these gorgeous colors to go with all of those beads so you've got kind of light very light peach like a cream it has just a whisper of peach to it so this is like a cream color you've got this gorgeous like deep teal and then the brown these are so pretty and i love these all clumped together they just look like flowers look at them when you clump them all together just a pendant made out of all of the tassels together that's just good stuff right there love it love it love it all right so we've got all of those tassels under the willow wooden design element speed mix now this is super cool and i was really excited about this i love wood and just natural beads in general so this was a treat for sure check this out so i'm gonna take all of these out you guys I'm gonna take them all out 
So there are two huge beads. These are so cool. And what's really cool about them is that they are lightweight, right? So even though they're big, they're large and in charge, you guys hear me say that all the time, but they're not heavy, which I also very much appreciate. That means you could actually turn those into earrings if you wanted to. I know that's a big earring, but I don't shy away from big earrings. And those are nice, lightweight. You've got this really cool long wooden bead that may or may not be part of our design coming up and then two smaller wooden beads and they are just gorgeous. I love the natural touches to this box. I really, really do. Oh wow, Catherine says, very cold wintry day in Australia. I just can't even imagine because it is so hot and humid here. I just can't imagine a cold wintry day, but I gotta tell you, it sounds pretty good. <laughs> it has been very hot and humid. All right, next is Everything Delightful Crystal Glass Mix. So this is gorgeous, by the way. Not that there was any, any doubt about that, but this has some just really gorgeous stuff in it. Look at the sparkle, you guys. So you've got these gorgeous green drops that have like this flash of rainbow to them that is just amazing you've got some square beads here which i always love a good square bead to kind of change things up you've got some gorgeous drops in like this like very light amber brown color kind of golden and then these drops i love drops and i particularly like drops that are drilled straight down the center they are just kind of easier in my opinion to um, design with a lot of times you don't have to worry about that wire wrap the triangle the little briolette wire wrap that we do some people get stumped on that one so the beads that are drilled straight down are always a welcome addition look how pretty right i'm just gonna sit these guys down all right next is the sweet blossom bead strand and this one's so pretty so so pretty i mean it, it just doesn't stop look how pretty I love it. I love it. So you've got this gorgeous boho in the center with the mother of pearl chips all over it. You've got these dark, dark greens and then the browns that are just kind of dreamy. I'm really into brown right now. I don't know if you guys saw the design that I did earlier today over with Juliana on the Jewel Loom but I used some check glass beads from Jesse James beads that were a gorgeous like brown honey color. I'm just really loving brown right now. So I'm feeling this. There is copper running through this. There are little pops of white with the spacer beads. There are even some little tiny rondelles in like a chocolate milk color that are just awesome. And of course, you've got these pops of green in the boho beads as well. So this is just a really, really beautiful, beautiful strand that would look pretty all by itself or broken apart and used in a bunch of other ways. All right, so next we have the mini metal assortment. Love a good metal assortment, and these never disappoint. So just giving you kind of a look-see before I open up the package. So the metal mixes always have fun stuff in them. You are definitely gonna get clasps, which I appreciate very much. So you've got a copper toggle in here, and there are two other antique brass toggles in here as well. And we're going to use one of these tonight for our design. There are some copper leaves, which I adore. You're also getting some bead caps and then these cutie butterflies. Look at those. So remember the butterflies that were in the other mix, the first mix that we opened, that mini bead mix. So there are butterflies all through this. Really, really beautiful. And everything goes together so perfectly. Becky says she loves the green and the brown combined. I do too. I absolutely love it. This is one of my top, top favorite boxes so far. It's hard to say that though, because it just seems like they're all so good. All right, now you're gonna get eight inches of cup chain. I love this addition because this just kind of takes things in like a, you could go two different ways with this whole box. You could go very natural and earthy, or you could go very, very classy and like dressy. And this pop of cup chain is gonna do just that. Like it's just gonna add that sparkle to it, right? Oh, love it. 
Love it, love it, love it. All right. And you're also going to get Chain Reaction, which is a staple in Magical Mystery Bead Boxes. And I'm glad that it is because I use so much Chain Reaction. If I don't get my Chain Reaction fix, I get really sad. So we've got two different Chain Reactions in here, um, different colored beads. It's thundering. Did you hear that? Wow. I'm going to have a little thunderstorm. And the warmth of the golds in chain reaction is just something that i know i talk about all the time you guys probably get tired of me saying the same things but i gotta tell you the chain reaction is just always so beautiful that you can use it all by itself you can cut it up and use small pieces of it or you can um wear it just like it is you know just pop a clasp on it and you've got a gorgeous necklace ready to go or a wrap bracelet right even if you don't do anything to it it's still just beautiful all right now you're going to get a boho bead pair i love bohos always a favorite to have and i love it when they're interesting and these definitely definitely check the interesting box for me so you've got this gorgeous brown color that has the ab finish all through it look at that all those pops of rainbow i love that but I think even more, and I love the sparkle. You guys know I love the sparkle. But there is something about these little cream colored ones that have my heart. And I think it's because of the metal mixture that is in here. So you've got your antique silver, you've got the cream color, and then the gold is almost like a rose gold, or it has like a hint of copper too. It's just a different color and mixed with that cream and the antique silver i don't know there's something about that that may be my favorite boho bead ever like and i know that's that's a tall order but seriously i'm in love with those bohos these need to be earrings immediately i love them all right so last but not least and we've got a ton of stuff here like i'm running out of room <laughs> Look at all of the stuff we've got. So last but not least are the wooden flower beads. And I really feel like these are kind of the star of the show with this box. I mean, it just keeps getting better and better, but I really am in love with these beads. Look at these. They remind me of a vintage jewelry box. Do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But when I was growing up, my grandmother had jewelry boxes. Like she collected jewelry boxes. She also collected jewelry, which kind of is where I get my love for that. But I can remember the deep woods in all of the boxes that she had, just these gorgeous colors of wood in oak and in cherry, and they had like the deepest stains, and then they would always have like a brass inlay of some variety. And that is exactly what these remind me of. I mean, they're just really plucking at my heartstrings. I feel like they are gorgeous all by themselves. They're gonna look amazing mixed into no matter what you do with them. And it has that inlay, that brass on both sides. So even if these guys pop over on you, you're still gonna have that beauty. I just, I think these are gorgeous. I'm absolutely in love. You've got that magnolia flower on them. I don't know, it just really kind of speaks to my my nostalgia. I love them, I love them, love them. So, all right, let's just take a look because we've got a lot to look at. Just kind of bring you over here just a little bit. I know we're kind of out of the shot with some of this stuff, but like, I mean, it just keeps on coming. Look at all the good stuff we've got here and it is all so gorgeous. I cannot wait to create with these. Tracy says the flower beads look like sandalwood and brass inlay from India. They do. They really, really do. I'm just in love. I'm in love with the whole box. I think the bead team knocked it out of the park. They always do, but you know, <laughs> Tina said, you know, we're total nerds when we love our grandma's stuff. I know, right? But like, that's where I got my eye for, you know, jewelry and sparkle and shine buttons and bows and just that's so deep rooted within me like putting on all of my 
um, aunts and my grandmother's jewelry and like playing in their stuff. Yeah, I just, I have such a love for all of that. And this really, really is very much reminiscent of a lot of those things. So it just goes to show that, you know, things, what goes around once will come back around again. So I love it. I think it's gorgeous. They nailed it. All right, you guys. So this is all the goodies. And believe it or not, I've got two projects planned. We're gonna do one tonight, and then we're gonna get up tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern, and we are going to make another piece of jewelry with our Magical Mystery Bead Box goodies. That's how good this box is. It deserves two lives. <laughs> Not that they don't all deserve two lives, but I just want you to know that we're going to use these tonight and we're going to use them again in the morning. So we're going to have lots and lots of beautiful jewelry by the end of this week, I'm telling you. So I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way and I'm going to bring in something that you guys have never seen me use ever. And I'm kind of excited about it, as silly as it is. You guys, let me show you. You'll be like, wow, you actually have one of those <laughs> because I never ever use it. But you guys, tonight we're gonna string. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? We never just straight string. But I gotta tell you, this box and all of these beads, I just, I can't help myself. So we're gonna string a necklace. Yes, we're gonna do a little extra, but I'm breaking out the bead board. We're actually gonna lay our beautiful new beads out. We're gonna lay out our little pattern and then we're gonna string a necklace. And I'm gonna be just happy as can be about it. And I hope you guys will be too. Look, I can even put all of my beauties right here where I can see them. Ah, yeah, I love it. I'm gonna put some more of them back here. We're just gonna fill up our bead board. I never use a bead board, but that's how inspired I was by this box, which is funny because I always try to make things so overly complicated. And I was like, you know what? This box deserves for these beads to just kind of stand alone and be gorgeous. So that's what we're gonna do. Now that doesn't mean I'm not gonna use some wire because you know I can't stay away from wire. So I did pull out the 18 gauge wire and we are gonna make some funny little components here. Let me just show them to you. And I'm keeping it super easy tonight because I feel like the beads really kind of speak for themselves. But we're gonna make some little spacers right we're gonna make some little wire spacers just to have some pops of this beautiful kind of gold color throughout so I thought we would make some little coiled wire we'll call them beads if you will right and I mean it's just easy peasy we're gonna coil up some 18 gauge wire we're gonna use the um, the let's see the small bell making pliers to do that and then we're going to put together a brace or a necklace and we might we might do a little something extra right at the end we'll just see we'll see how much time it takes us okay so i'm gonna cut sorry i had to grab some water i'm gonna cut about six inches of 18 gauge wire and i am going to just bring in my small bell making pliers and I'm gonna use the larger mandrel on the small bell making pliers. And I'm just gonna grab that wire and you don't even have to grab it right at the end if you don't want to, it's just whatever makes you happy. But we're gonna turn that first loop, okay? And then we're just gonna to continue to turn the pliers. I'm opening and closing the pliers and kind of pulling the wire as I turn. So I'm working up a coil out of the wire. And this is also a really good way to make jump rings if you're in a pinch and you need <laughs> That's so funny. Why is that if she pulls out some bead stoppers, I'm going to want to know what was in that tushy shot. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny you guys so recently I did I got a shot in the tushy and it was just a anti-inflammatory but um yeah I can I can 
<laughs> I can giggle about that. That's so funny. All right, so I've put together a coil here. I mean, it's just that easy. If you wanted to create jump rings out of this, you just come in and just snip right down the center and you would have some 18 gauge jump rings for this. Um, however, I don't want jump rings, so I am gonna tidy this up just a little bit. I'm gonna trim off the end here that we don't need. And I'm also gonna kind of take a look at some of the ones that I've already made because I want it to be pretty much the same size. And so I've coiled a little bit too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in with my thumbnail and just kind of mark the spot. See how I stuck my thumbnail down in there? If you don't wanna do that, you definitely don't have to. You can, um, you can use your pliers and stick them in there and then just pull them apart. That's gonna help me get in there so that I can trim off what I don't need. And I will have a little coiled section that is the length that I want. Okay, now there's a couple of things you can do with these. A lot of times I will just leave the ends just like they are. I use my flush cutter so I make sure that I've got a nice flush cut on them and I double check them. If I don't have a flush cut, I'll come in and kind of just trim the end to make sure that it doesn't have any sharp edges. However, if you don't want to leave your ends like that, you can take your pliers, let me show you. You can come in with your <clears throat> your chain nose pliers, excuse me, and you can take that very end of the wire, grab a hold of it, and then tuck it to the inside, just like so. See how I tucked that down inside? Now, my bead stringing wire is gonna go through there, no problem, There's, it's not gonna get caught on anything on the outside is the biggest thing. And you can do both ends, just like that. So now, you don't have to worry that you've got any sharp edges, okay? In fact, let's do that to all of them. We may as well. It's it's really better to do that than to leave them. So, I mean, why not? We're here. We're gonna string a necklace. We never do that. <laughs> but I'm excited because I know what it looks like. I've already made it once, so I'm excited. I'm excited because I'm gonna wear it. <laughs> And you know, stringing is good for the soul. You know, sometimes if you just get in a, a creative rut and you can't think of anything, you can't come up with anything, just string some of your favorite Jesse James beads. You know, just straight stringing is so therapeutic. So, all right, just tucking in all of my ends. We're not gonna use all of these, but might as well go ahead and tuck them because I can always use them in a different project later. Okay, so there are those. And then I have four here that are a little bit smaller. So these are only about three coils. Maggie, the new chair, yes, it is helping. The new chair is amazing. I wish I had not waited. Tina asked too. I wish I had not waited so long to get a better chair. I just, I don't think I realized how horrible my posture was in the other chair. And this chair kind of makes me sit up straight, which is definitely what I needed. I'm such a rebel. My mom, we were really, um, I'm just tucking my ends in and chatting you guys, so. Um, when I was growing up, my mom, when she was growing up, she was in cotillion and that whole, which is a very Southern thing, I think. Um, but when she was raising me after she had been through cotillion and that whole scene, she, um, used to make me walk with a book on my head to make me stand up straight because I had horrible posture. I mean, she wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like punishment. It was because I had the most horrible posture ever. And so she would make me walk around with a book on my head, which they made her do in cotillion. And <laughs> so as I aged, I think in my very, um, you know, I'm, I don't, don't tell me what to do kind of, <laughs> don't, don't tell me what the rules are kind of person. And so my posture just went downhill, you know, and it's, it was, it was definitely a, um, you know, teenage angst. Oh yeah, you want me to walk straight up and down? Well, I'm gonna slump over. <laughs> yeah. 
So anyway, okay, we have our little coiled pieces of wire here. You guys don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I, I wanted to add just a pop of this beautiful warm gold color. I've got the 18 gauge wire, so why not, right? And um, just on that note, actually, the uh, multicolored artistic wire looks really pretty with this as well. So if you're not feeling the gold, you're not feeling the silver color, maybe one of those, um, you know, beautiful multicolored wires will fill in here for you. Give you a little extra pop of color. All right, so let me move my notebook out of the way here because I'm gonna have to refer to the picture because I did put this together last night, but I can't remember exactly. I do know that in the center is this gorgeous bead. And so I want that to be right in the center and then we're gonna build out from there. So I want to take two of my little coils and I want those to go on either side, right here in the middle. And then I wish I had put these, maybe not in this whole little thing. Now I'm having a hard time seeing all of them. Like <laughs> this little space here is too small. Kind of open up a little bit. All right, so there are some of these really beautiful bicone beads that are in here, and I definitely want to use some of the bicones. So the bicones are gonna fit really nicely into the end of each one of the coils. So that's gonna fit really, really beautifully. So we're gonna put a bicone on either side, and then we definitely want to use some green in this because you can't leave the green out. It's just so darn pretty. So there's our green. Let's do another bicone and another coil on either side. So when you guys create necklaces, if you're just doing stringing, how do you lay your designs out? Do you guys use a beadboard to lay everything out or do you just start kind of stringing and start, like Wanda said, with your the little pinch clips for the ends of your bead stringing wire and just start putting things on the wire and see what happens. What's your, what's your favorite way, if you're gonna string a necklace, to put a design together? All right, where are those gorgeous? Yes, these. These are going in our necklace tonight. So I'm gonna put those right there on either side. Do you work on a beadboard? Do you start from the center and go out? Or do you work on the ends and work from one end to the other? I'm always curious to know because I feel like everybody does it so differently. It's really interesting to me to know like what other people are doing. I've got these little rondelles. They're kind of, they're not quite mustard because they're not quite yellow, but they do have a kind of green yellow to them. So we're going to put those in and some of these cubes because you guys know I love a good square bead. So lay those out. Tina says it depends on her mood. Rosanna strings with the bead stoppers. Nancy says she lays hers out in the tray. I very rarely lay mine out in the tray, to be honest with you, um, but I thought it would be fun to pull the tray out because I mean, I never use it and it's such a good way to look at your design. So I thought it would be fun. All right, so put some of those little rondelles on the ends. Now, I wanna bring in some of the, art or the antique brass bead caps, and I wanna use the wooden beads. Let's see. They may have gotten, no, here they are, these guys. So these were in with the large wooden beads, these guys. I'm gonna put an antique brass bead cap on either side of that guy. And we'll do that with the other one on the other side as well. If I can find what I'm looking for. <laughs> All right. Julie says she just wings it. I like to wing it too. That's a lot of times that's what I will do is I will just wing it. But I got to tell you, sometimes it, it doesn't work out when I do that. And that was also part of the reason that I pulled out the beadboard because 
I didn't want to wing it on the fly. <laughs> I thought, mm, that could go really wrong really, really quickly. All right, so I've got these gorgeous miracle beads. I'm going to lay those down, one on each side. And I want some more greens. So we're going to use these little green. And then let's use some of the smaller little coils that we created to go between. And let's do another green bead here. So you can see I'm kind of using, I'm using a combination of the antique brass and the gold. Um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, you can stick with just one or the other, but I really like to mix my metals. That's one of my favorite things to do. It's so freeing to be able to do that. It took me a long time to kind of embrace that look. So now that I have really kind of given in, I, um, I really enjoy mixing my metals together. <laughs> Julie says I'm also not doing it in front of hundreds of people. Well, <laughs> that seems to be like, that's a good portion of my life is doing things in front of lots of people. So I figure, you know, I mean, the beadboard helps, but sometimes things just, sometimes things just go wrong. But you know, you just roll with it. All right, so I've got these really beautiful rondelles. I want to call out the beads as I'm going because I just want you to see all of the beauty that is here. So I've got these little rondelles and I'm gonna put some more of the little coils in between each one of those, just another little pop of metal in between there, right? And getting pretty close to the end here and we'll string this up and then we might do something a little different at the end, we'll see, we'll see. So some more of the little tiny ones and then let's see, let's use some more of the cubes because I really, really love those. So my necklace is going to be all said and done. It should be right around 16 inches. Um, it may not be exact and that's okay. If it is not quite 16 inches, I can always add chain or jump rings to this so that it is gonna be the length that I want. And that's another good thing about the um, chain reaction. I always have chain reaction on hand because I love to add chain reaction as the extra length if I need it to uh, pieces. It looks beautiful, you know, and it looks intentional. So even if you shortened your necklace by accident, you didn't quite lay out enough beads, the addition of the chain reaction looks very intentional in the design, which I, I adore. So, okay, so we have our basic design laid out and now we are going to bring in some bead stringing wire and we're just going to do some straight stringing here to start with. I'm just using some 19 strand in gold color and a little gnat has decided that he really wants to spend some time sorry guys he wants to spend some time near my face <laughs> so i apologize if it sounds like i'm huffing i'm not i'm really just trying to blow him out of the way <laughs> he he wants to hang out with us and i'm, I'm just not a fan <laughs> okay so I've got some crimp tubes here. Let me grab two jump rings and we will get started with this. Those two were linked together. Oh, that was three, that's okay. Okay, so I've got my bead stringing wire and I'm gonna thread on one of my crimp beads, crimp tube, whichever one you prefer, onto the end and then I'm gonna take the tail end of my wire. I'm not using a wire guardian tonight, just using my bead string and wire and a jump ring. I'm gonna take the tail end of the wire and I'm gonna go right back through that crimp tube. And then I'm gonna pull the crimp tube close to my jump ring. Now, I don't wanna to get too close. I still want there to be some wiggle room in there. You see, I don't wanna make that super tight. I do want there to be a little bit of, of wiggle. And 
reach across here and grab my crimper tool. So the crimper tool's got two notches. The back notch is the one that looks like a little piece of macaroni. You can see. I'm going to use that one. I'm going to place that crimp tube in that notch and I want to be sure that my bead stringing wire is not crisscrossing inside that crimp tube. Okay, you want to be sure that your bead stringing wire is separated. So you can e even come in there and separate it with your fingers and then squeeze with your crimper tool and you're going to see what happens is the crimper tool brings the metal of the crimp bead down between. That's what that macaroni shape is for. It brings a piece of the metal between the two bead stringing wires and it keeps them from touching each other which is going to reduce any kind of abrasion. The abrasion is what over time will wear away that nice nylon coating on your bead stringing wire and we don't want that. So if you crimp properly your necklace will last forever. I'm going to put that in the front notch of the crimper tool just to give it a nice squeeze and tidy up that crimp. It just kind of makes things all nice and neat and then if you've crimped properly you can totally trim off the tail you do not need that for any extra security Rosalina says gnats are a pain in the nose yes ma'am they are i would agree 100 percent. all right so now i'm just going to start on one end and i'm going to thread on all of these beautiful beads that we've laid out and then we will crimp the other end and maybe we'll do something a little extra to this. I know I keep saying that, but it's because I hadn't fully committed to the extra just yet. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll just see what happens. I do know that these beads are absolutely gorgeous. And so no matter what you do with this, no matter what pattern you lay out, you're going to have a gorgeous piece of jewelry, whether it's a necklace or a bracelet or earrings. I mean, you can't beat it with this box. It's just such a beautiful box. I mean, even just that little, little, little group of beads. I mean, so pretty. So, so pretty. All right. I do have a feeling, well, that my necklace is going to be a little on the short side, but that's okay. That's all right. That's why we have our chain reaction on hand. Wanda says, do you ever use the magical crimper? I've never used the magical crimper. Wanda, do you have a magical crimper? Have you used it? I have not. I know that there are several different kinds of crimpers that are available out there. I've just never used anything other than just the standard crimper tool. That's what I learned how to crimp with. And so I'm, I've always been kind of one of those, if it's not broken, don't fix it kind of mindsets, but enlighten me, enlighten me. <laughs> Show me the ways of the magical crimper. What is this magical crimper tool you speak of? So pretty, so, so pretty. Oh, and these are my favorites. I love them. I love them so, so much. Oh, wait a minute. Put that on before the little rondel. I know we do a lot of wire designs and I teach you guys lots of techniques and you know and we we focus on a lot of education but you know what sometimes it's nice to just slow down and just string some beautiful beads and that's what we're doing we're just stringing some beautiful beads Vicki says she just got the magical crimper but hasn't used it yet. And that Neele won't use anything else anymore. Hmm, that's good to know. I'm always interested in what everybody out there is using. I um I'm a tool collector. <laughs> I collect beads, I collect tools, I collect jewelry, I collect watches. I'm such a collector. I'm such a weirdo, I know. But um yeah, I definitely have a soft spot for tools, so. That's interesting, interesting indeed. Always have to know what are the new tools, 
what are all of the fun things that are out there that I haven't played with yet? I gotta play with them. Gotta play with everything. And it's funny, I feel like I'm probably not the only one. A lot of us jewelry makers are that way. Like you want the beads and the tools and the wires and all of the things, <laughs> you know, to go with it. All right, we're getting close, just stringing on the rest of these. And then I will move this back up here so that you guys can see it. I realize it is out of the shot. Um, I'll move this back up onto the beadboard here in just a second. I'm just trying to get all of our beads on here really quickly. And then I'm gonna, I might actually get out the bead stoppers just because Wanda. <laughs> Wanda mentioned the bead stoppers. I might have to get one because if we do this little extra thing, we're going to need a bead stopper. All right, let me move this back up here onto the board so that you can kind of get a better look of it or look at it rather. I'm very close to the end, so got a lot of beads here. These little miracle beads, they make the most beautiful little spacers in between your larger beads. I love them so much. Robin says she could open a bead shop. You know what? I probably could too. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, I could probably open a bead shop as well. I mean, it's, it's out of control to be completely honest with you. I have more pliers than any one person will ever use in their lifetime and more beads than any one person will use in their lifetime. And that's before I started working with Jesse James beads. So now I have Jesse James bead stash. That is amazing. And I have all of the other beads as well. So I've got like, I have beads, I have beads for days, but I'm not complaining. Like I love it. Love, I love to just like, look at all the beads <laughs> even if i don't use them i just want to look at them all right so there is our necklace it's all laid out we've got it strung on our bead stringing wire and <laughs> i'm not quite finished with this and i am gonna grab <laughs> look wanda <laughs> i'm not ready to crimp yet I've got a little bead stopper. I'm going to pop my little bead stopper on here right on the end because I saw something last night that intrigued me and I thought, you know what? That would be a cute little addition to our necklace. All right, so we have our necklace all ready to go. And of course, it would look absolutely beautiful just like it is if we just crimped the end and we're completely done with it. But I got to I got to talk about one of our secret stash members gave me an idea last night and I don't think they even realized that they gave me this idea, but I was watching Randy Brown last night. You guys know Randy, she's part of the secret stash group. She is such a fun person. I love to watch her. I was watching one of her lives last night and she had a necklace that I, I just caught like the tail end where she had a really cool bead in the center of her necklace and she had taken some small chain and she ran the chain through the bead and then had the chain kind of hanging underneath and then she added dangles to it. Randy, if you are here, I'm giving you complete 110% credit for this. I thought it was the coolest idea ever. If you are watching, just know that I was totally inspired. So let's try that with our little center bead here because we have these butterflies. Remember our little butterflies? We've got some in the metal mix, the little metal mini mix, and then there were these little small ones that were also in the mini mix. And I was thinking it would be so pretty to have those hanging underneath. So I'm just gonna take some small chain. This is just some beetle on chain, but there is a ton of chain over on the Jesse James Beads website and it's, you've got a weekly deal with the chain. So grab yourself some chain, okay? And I'm going to try, I probably should have done this before we put this on our bead stringing wire. 
Um, but I'm always making things more difficult than they need to be. And this might not actually work, you guys, but we're gonna see. It might not. The hole on this bead might not be big enough. But if it's not, I've got a fix. So, okay, I don't think that I don't think that the chain's gonna fit all the way through there, but that's okay, because you know what? We have this really cool invention called the jump ring, and we can make anything work with the jump ring. <laughs> So I'm just going to put it on a jump ring, okay? But if you had a bead that had a big enough hole, like these guys, these guys have a big enough hole that you could run this chain through that and bead stringing wire. So just keep that in mind. All right, but we're going to improvise. We're going to use a jump ring because, well, why not? We have them and they're handy. And yes, I'm mixing my antique brass and my gold together. I'm not mad at it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna open up a jump ring and I'm gonna thread on one end of my chain here. And I really want, what I really, really want is, I want my chain to have a middle. So in order to have a middle, probably should have done this first, but that's okay. get an idea first of how long I want that drape to be. That'll be pretty good. But what I want is I want to be sure that I have one middle link. So I thread one end, if you can see, I thread one end on a piece of just spare wire here to find that center link, which is right there, that guy right there. Now I need, <laughs> I'm now I, I truly am doing this on the fly. So you're kind of seeing this on the fly. So I'm marking that link with another piece of wire. This is probably the most complicated way ever of doing this. And it definitely can be a lot easier. I'm just always making things hard. So there's that middle link and that's where I want my big butterfly to go. So let's go ahead and hang the big butterfly and then I can kind of worry about the other two in a minute. So just gonna open up a jump ring here and we're gonna thread our butterfly onto the jump ring and then I'm gonna hook that into that link. <laughs> Maybe slide the wire out and slide the jump ring in. Yes, I got it, first try. <laughs> Congratulations, Sarah, you did it tonight. <laughs> okay, I have to congratulate myself. Sometimes things get, you know, you just never know what's gonna happen when it's live. So there, I've marked the middle, I've got our butterfly in the center here, and I'm gonna put a jump ring on the other side of our chain and then we will hang the other smaller butterflies. But I just wanted to be sure that I had a, a definite middle for that one butterfly. I don't like it when things don't hang uh, evenly, right? And this one's gonna go over here. I'll go ahead and hook that on to our bead stringing wire and probably four millimeter jump rings would have been a better choice, but Working with what we got here. Go ahead and open that up. And at this point, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and crimp the end and then we'll come back in and add our two other butterflies, okay? I just feel like we should go ahead and, and get this part finished now that we have our chain attached. So I'm gonna take one of our crimp tubes, thread that on, and another jump ring, and I'm just going to thread through and then back down through my crimp tube, and then I'm gonna pull everything down, okay? And because I want a good crimp on this, I'm gonna take the tail end of my bead stringing wire, and I'm gonna thread it through a bead or two just because I feel like I get a better grip on that crimp tube in the crimper tool when I don't have the bead stringing wire kind of sticking out to the side. And I'm sure that you guys have heard me say that before. 
I feel like I can really kind of straighten out the bead string wire within the crimp if I thread it through a couple of beads there. Now I can really look at it, I can see it, I don't have the extra bead stringing wire in the way, and I can come in with my crimper tool and get a really good crimp on that. Just squeeze, and then I'm gonna put it in the front notch of the crimper tool and squeeze. Now I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool and I'm gonna trim off the tail of this wire if I can get in there. Okay, all right, so now the only thing that is lacking on the end of our necklace is our clasp. Let's use one of the gorgeous toggles that are included in our box. And then we will add our last little butterflies and I'll let you guys go for the night. And then we'll get back together. We'll meet back tomorrow morning because guys, we've still got a ton of beads. <laughs> Like we, we've made an entire necklace, but we just have scratched the surface of this box. We've got a ton of beads left, and I think, I think another necklace is in order for tomorrow morning. So let's do something different tomorrow morning. All right, so there's our toggle, there's our necklace. This is gonna be so, so pretty. Let's go ahead and put on the last two butterflies on either side of our butterfly here in the middle. And then I'll put this on a bust so you can see it. Just thread these on. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. <laughs> well, <laughs> counting all that out didn't do me any good, did it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I want to go in that 13 right there. Come on, little jump ring. There we go, got it. You notice I had to count that more than once. <laughs> oh goodness. I kept letting go, so, all right. Last one, threading on our little butterfly here, and let's count out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and there's the 13. Right there. All right, hopefully those are even. If they're not, I can always adjust them. And we've got our little butterfly charms. Oh, that's so cute. I love it. I cannot wait to put this on the bus so that you guys can see it. All right, let me get the bust. We'll put this on it and then I'll turn you guys around. And yeah, I definitely will have to add a little bit of chain reaction to this. Let me turn you guys around so that you guys can see. All right, get you nice and straight here. Look how pretty, so simple right simple stringing is good for the soul and when you have beautiful beads sometimes all you got to do is just string up some beautiful beads you know it doesn't have to be complicated you can just make something pretty <laughs> leslie says grab a bust <laughs> ah you are so funny you guys crack me up I love it. So yeah, we've got little pops of metal because we made our little coils. So we definitely gave it a little extra something, but you know what? Even if you left the coils out and you just added more of the gorgeous beads from this magical mystery bead box, you would have the most beautiful necklace ever, right? I mean, any order, it makes no difference. This box was phenomenal and these beads are gonna look good no matter what you do to them no matter what you do to them. I love that. I feel like it is a fun and interesting design and I definitely had a lot of fun putting it together. I hope you guys had fun hanging out with me tonight doing something a little different than what we normally do. Um, it was fun. Sometimes it's nice to, you know, do a little change of pace. Straight stringing is good stuff. <laughs> I know I've said that a bunch, but I mean, it really is. If you get stuck and you can't seem to come up with anything, 
one of the best ways to kind of break through that wall is just to get some beautiful beads and string them. And with Jesse James beads, I mean, you, you don't have to even ask if they're beautiful beads. We already know they are. So just string them up and see what happens. Sometimes putting different beads and different textures and colors and shapes together uh, really kind of jogs your creativity, right? And gets you inspired. And that little pop of the extra chain, I just want to thank Randy Brown for that. That was such a cool idea that she had and I'm glad that she shared it and then I can turn around and share it with you guys. So just know that you guys over on your secret stash group, Magical Mystery Beadbox, I'm inspired by you guys every single day every single day. I scroll through the pictures that you guys post and I am blown away at the amazing things that you guys create. So don't ever for once think that, you know, I, I'm up here and you're here. That is so not true. We are, we are equals all the way and I am inspired by you guys and your creativity and the way that you look at the beads and the way that you use the beads in your own designs. And I'm just, I'm so humbled and just so grateful to be a part of that. So I appreciate you. I appreciate you very much and I enjoy what we are doing together. So thanks for hanging out with me. <laughs> Have a great night, you guys. You can catch me first thing tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern time. We're going to play with some more beads. I mean, I still have a ton, right? This magical mystery bead box is just nonstop. We've got a ton more beads to play with. Let's put together something, um, something else. Let's make another necklace. Let's do something else fun, a little different tomorrow, okay? We'll still keep it cool and easy breezy. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys after breakfast, okay? Have a great night and we'll see you in the morning. Bye, guys.